Hi, I'm Ray. And I'm Saren. We're your Spider Baby hosts from To Know Her Is To Fear Her, a Spider Woman podcast, as well as proud members of The Collective. You're listening to Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks. Enjoy the show! Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to make sure you know all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on all new episodes of Wade's World, Boob Windows and Long Boxes, our hard R movie reviews, and so much more, all completely uncensored. Access starts for as little as $1 a month, full videos when you pledge $3 a month. Check us out at the link in all of our show notes, or just go straight to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrot, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks podcast. I love Ben Riley. That's right, kiddies. It's time for another Scarlet Pimps episode. It's the end of the month. And more importantly, the last episode of Ultimate Spider Cast on the speed, but we'll get to that at the end. Anyway, I am Phil. Mac Kona could not make it again, but joining me, at, as always, at the end of the month, it is the High Priest Punch. Hello, hello, everyone. Hey, Phil. Ready for another uh, rip roaring episode of Ben Riley. Um, but yeah, it's a shame that Matt's not here again. Hope Matt's okay. Um, shout out to the fam, to Matt as well. And, and Phil, uh, Noel says hello. Oh, you know what? I love Noel. It's a, I don't think I've been, well, I was going to say I've never been on an episode with him, but I think I was on, you know, when we had the big group together mm-hmm. for like the game show and stuff. But I'm like, no, I need some one on one, you know, at least either me and Noel or you, me and Noel. Yeah, you know, for sure. We'll see if we can, uh, should, we should make it happen. Uh, but Noel, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a big fan of Capes and Lunatics as well. I was just chatting with him beforehand and he said, oh, just make sure to say hi from me on air. <laughs> did, you tell, did you tell him we need to do the uh, Justin the Owl Osgood uh, impression contest? Oh, oh yes, we, we do. I, I recorded with Noel and Justin the Owl and they were exchanging impersonations. It was very funny. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, but you uh, can hear that only exclusive to Patreon. So, uh, oh, speaking of a man of many voices, Russell's there. The sausage is <laughs> long tonight. Oh, long yes. and slippery. <laughs> sausage man, sausage man does whatever a sausage can. Russell, I hope Russell's going well. He's wild, man. Wild. Like an animal. Like an animal. I saw he, uh, Russell purchased a few really good things from a Comic Con that he went to. Oh. Um, mm, mm. Comic Con's in and around your area again. Phil, I know another guy from Erie, Pennsylvania, Daniel, he went to Erie's Comic Con. So are they all back back to normal? Situation normal? Um, I think most of the ones around here, I haven't been to the last few. I haven't been that brave. But yeah, I did see... Uh, Yes, I did see Daniel in his book Fringe Night this weekend mm. on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, Erie's like on the other side of the state for me. That's like a uh. few hours away. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you, even like the local cons are back. But I don't know. Again, I'm not brave enough to, to brave those yet. And just, like the the one just, that, cos- mm-hmm. just cosplay as uh, as uh, the shadow or something where you get to cover your your nose and your mouth. <laughs> you know, to keep it topical, I do have a Scarlet Spider costume with the full face mask. So. Oh, nice. Nice. Have you got the the hoodie? Um. Yeah. You know what? I actually got a hoodie, and I did cut. It, it came. I mean, it had the spider on it, but it came with the sleeves, so I cut the sleeves off. Ooh, lovely. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're, you're halfway there. All you need now is like red tights, and you're in. I, I'm done. <laughs> I got him. <laughs> uh, I even got red tennis shoes for it. Can I? Can I dress up as despair? Sure. <laughs> I mean, or, be- or better still, overdrive. We'll get the. We'll ah, get to that. <laughs> Whatever's the other guy's name, Fester. Fester's even better. Oh, from the, um, the looter. Yeah, no, the from looter, the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I read the. I read these. I'm like, oh god, I'm putting some looter on the schedule for Lil. For next <laughs> <day."> you're, welcome. <laughs> you're, you're welcome, Lil. Cut, <laughs> bro. Oh, so many Lil drops, right? You must have an iPad just full of Lilith. I reckon. Oh, it's 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 on just, the, it's, it's on the, memory. Uh, just yeah, oh, just oh, memory yeah. filled up. <laughs> I told you I have a uh, a uh, soundboard on my uh, computer. Here. Yeah, 
I mean, yeah. it's there's two there's almost two pages of Lilith. Wow. Are you, can you play it like a can you play it like a piano? Like you know, and just not look at it. Just you know, you know your fingers. You know, blah, 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 no, I kind of, I, I kind of, when I look at the page, I kind of remember where stuff's at. Like yeah. I, I kind of have to give it at least a glance. It's I mean, so salty. <laughs> I mean, Testament. I don't think from listening to your show, I don't think you've you've hit a wrong drop. Maybe once. I think I heard once, but that was that's you know amongst hundreds of episodes. So you know, true. Bill makes it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> How is Lilith, by the way? How's she going? Good. I mean, you know, I think she stays locked up in her house most of the time. I know she's good with her menagerie of dogs. I think it was, she's, we were talking about that the other day. She has like four dogs now. Yeah. Yeah. And armadillos. Armadillos, yeah. Don't get enough of them. How's the ruse? <laughs> Rizzo, okay. They're uh, they're all wearing their masks. They love it. <laughs> oh, Russell, how dare you? Judas Traveler is always in our hearts. Oh my gosh, Judas Traveler. That's what I want to cosplay as. Russell, you should cosplay as Judas Traveler. Oh, that would be cool. don't even fake. Don't even fake the mustache. You guys got to grow the mustache. <laughs> we'll all you got to do there. is go into an op shop and just you know, because that's what his costume looks like. It just looks like a, a slapdash. Just buy anything from a, a second-hand store, clothing shop. It's like a 90, slap it on. It's like a nineties goth. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, Russell. I, da- I dare you to do like an episode or two on Judas Traveler. Ooh, <laughs> I Russell. I dare you to do like a two and a half hour epic episode on Judas Traveler. Like, <laughs> I mean, he never makes it out of the. I mean, he doesn't die, but he doesn't make it out of the Clone Saga. Spoilers. So yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you, you one episode should do it. Yeah. Yeah, te- yeah. You technically go panel by panel, with Judas Traveler. You should be able to make two and a half hours. Exactly. Then you get the disappointing ending. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so should we jump into these, Ray? We got four issues tonight. Yeah, Phil. So what is this? What is this four part? What is this saga that we're looking at? Well. <laughs> This is kind of, the four issues we have tonight are kind of like part one. They did it to back in the day. They did a two part. You know, there was no Spider Man books. They switched everything to Scarlet Spider books, kind of um, mm. because you know, aping the success of Age of Apocalypse. Remember when the X Men did all that? And- yeah, it's, it's a nice. I think it's a nice little marketing ploy uh, because it's it's temporary enough that people will know that it's not gonna you know it's not gonna ruffle the feathers of fans. Yeah, but at the same time, as well, it's um. You know, for fans of Scarlet Spider, it's like we we've we've got our own titles: Web of Scarlet Spider, The Amazing Scarlet Spider, Spectacular Scarlet Spider. So, um, but yeah, it's a shame that these were only like what two issues long. Oh <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, we'll we'll get through a little bit. Um, Web of Spider Man actually lasted for four. Oh, Web of. You know, we'll, you'll, oh. you'll 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 see. We'll, we'll get this on that. That's like, that's a that's a long modern run. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. Yeah, that's a modern run, man. <laughs> um, oh, and uh, okay, I'll announce it here. I mean, we're doing most of our interviews on or going to the Patreon now. We may share some of it on the podcast, you know, as a little taste, you know, when we do a, a uh, mm-hmm. interview. But uh, end of October, kids, we will be talking. Again, this is topical for uh, Ben Riley. But uh, yes, at the end of October, uh, early November, you'll be hearing... An interview See that's breaking news. All right. Yes, at the end of October, early November, you will hear an interview with Kelly Thompson talking about yes. the new Spider Man Beyond stuff featuring, yes, current Ben Riley uh stories. That'd be so cool. Kelly is so much fun to listen to, and I know she's been on your show a few times. Oh, she's great. Gosh, she's done a lot as well. So it's like when you when you mentioned that she was on, I mean obviously Yeah. You'd be questioning her about or chatting with her about Ben Riley, but what don't you ask her? I mean, she's like, <laughs> so much is up, she's got going. Like the first time I talked to her, it was about she was writing Kate Bishop Hawkeye, and then I think I know we talked to her about Deadpool uh, yep. when Captain Marvel <clears throat> One Captain came Marvel. out. Did we did we do a Black Widow episode? I mean, yeah, it's just like that's she's like I, the. I think she's like the longest running Captain Marvel writer now. I think so. Uh, she either is or it's getting close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, well, who's the other one? Kelly Sue DeConnick, I think. But yeah, she's, yes. If she has, if she hasn't beaten her yet, she's getting close. Yeah. 
Yeah. That'll be fun. So, so just, um, yeah, maybe excerpts then, Phil, you're saying on the regular show and then the full, yeah, the full in- interview on Patreon. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it will, we might do like a taste of each, you know, a little mm-hmm, couple mm-hmm. minutes snippet on each. Yeah. And then yeah. send everyone to the Patreon because yes, kids, we'll get to that announcement at the end, but the Patreon, very important these days, more than ever. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I was thinking Phil, I might bump mine up a little, um, see what can, uh, yeah, see what I can do. I guess we could just, you know, hey, ki- yes, kids, uh, starting in October, <laughs> so probably the week after you hear this, yes, the Southgate Media Group will be no more. Uh, the Capes Ooh. Lunatics and Capes Lunatic Sidekicks will be our own free agents, you know, with me as the Incorporated. Figure- yeah, yes, incorporated with me as the figurehead and Lil cracking the whip behind me. <laughs> oh, it was already started yesterday. She's like, she's like, here, go, go get this website. Go get the because we're gonna have a website and stuff. She's like, go get, Man. you know, you know, make these emails. Go get this, you know, website and stuff. So yeah, I was doing work yesterday because Lil was like, oh, cracking the whip on me. That's good though. It's yeah. good. Oh yeah. Keep them active. You get on the front foot. You make sure that it's all kind of, um, you know, well, oh, you, you're very well established already. But yeah, just those little things. Uh, yeah, to yeah. Get it. Like I said, kids, hopefully the quality should stay the same. It's just the only difference is we're going to be moving while this show, everything Marvel will be on the Capes and Lunatics podcast and everything DC. So Ray's not going to hear it. will be on the Capes and Lunatics side. <laughs> Look, I'm getting into DC. I tell you, I know, but there's one show. More stuff, do stuff on Dr. Fate. Come on. <laughs> there, there's, but every time we do Batman, me and Lil are just like, Ray's not going to hear this. <laughs> Uh, look, I love your shows, but I must admit that I don't tune in to, to Batman that much. Um, I love Batman. Only oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I can play the weirdest thing. It's dropped for me. You don't care, but if I just play that one, that's like an offense. <laughs> I love Batman. Can I just say, Phil, look, <clears throat> and again. It was under duress. Sh- I know. I know. <laughs> n- not, not throwing shade at any, any particular character, but... I was in a, in a uh, Facebook group. I am in a Facebook group, and they'd love doing these throwdowns. Superman versus Batman, who wins? I cannot believe Batman was voted more. How? Batman. Because <laughs> he cheats. Superman's too nice of a guy. Batman will cheat. That is the only reason Superman is too nice, you know, mm-hmm. only reason. I'm sure there are ways you can go around. Anyway, don't get into that. <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> Oh man, what, what now? What Russell been watching horror films all month? What's everyone's favorites? I oh. haven't watched any really like horror movies. I think in a while. Um, Mine, Dead Set, <clears throat> no question. Evil Dead Two. Oh, uh, nice, all time favorite. Um, but I love the Evil Dead franchise, of course. Army of Darkness is good. Um, but yeah, I think the you one that, th- I was gonna say. I haven't watched horror movies in a while, but I think the one that scared me the most was the 2015 Fantastic Four. <laughs> not in a good way oh that's the, that's the other thing kids in uh next in 2022 on patreon i think what we're gonna do at least once a month there do t- we're taking to take like we're gonna make a list of like the worst superhero movies and do brackets so like every month we'll pit two movies against each other until we g- get to the worst yeah so i mean you're invited ray if you want any piece that's of cool that, that yeah. sounds that sounds really fun yeah marvel dc yeah <laughs> Yeah, uh, and you know, and beyond, right? Mm-hmm. There is a bloodshot. Maybe. <laughs> well, I know, I know, like the you know some of the early suggestions were like, hey, we could do Superman three versus Superman four, and uh, you know, ah, I know we're yeah, saying yeah, yeah. like Supergirl and you know that Halle Berry Catwoman, and that's pretty cool. So it's like a it's a throwdown, and then we'll find out. Is that it? We're going to find the best movie or the best worst movie? Well, well, the yeah, the the, the king of the worst, yeah, 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 cool. And everyone's like, when are you getting the Scarlet Spider? Okay, we'll get the Scarlet Spider. Oh, yes. All right. Sorry, sorry, fellow pimps. Pimps. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Well, I at least wanted to get that Kelly Thompson news out there because that is Ben Riley, you know. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, yes, today we're covering virtual morality, uh, the four parter. That part one begins in Web of Scarlet Spider number one from November 1995. Writer Tom DeFalco and Todd DeZago, penciler Paris Carunas, mm-hmm. inker Randy Emberlin, colorist Kevin Tinsley and Malibu Color, letterer Steve Dutrow, uh, and editor Eric Fine Fien. <laughs> in oh, yeah, Dutrow. 
in There's a New Spider in Town. S-s-s-s. Wasn't that like a Sinatra song? Uh, while attempting to stop a gang of muggers, the Scarlet Spider is mistaken for Spider-Man. When they realize they are actually facing the Scarlet Spider, they begin to mock the hero as nothing more than an imitator, or an imitator, an amateur. <laughs> However, <laughs> their their confidence is quickly trounced as the web slinger takes them down with a barrage of impact webbing and stingers. I guess um, <clears throat> I guess they they don't know that he's a clone, right? Oh, so no, he's yeah, very no. mu- very much an imitator. But we know. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a, he's essentially Spider Man. I mean, he's a clone, right? So he's yeah. I mean, all they know is, yeah, it's a new guy in a suit. You know, seems mm. to have Spider-Man's yeah. powers, but yeah. Mm. As he swings away, the spider's upset that he's treated like an amateur when he is the real Peter Parker. For now. Uh, he, he recalls how, again, it's like every time now, it's like, you know, in case it's someone's first step issue, it's like, I am the real Peter Parker, but I call myself Ben Rowley because then you got to go through the last five years, you know. The guys, yeah. Because he recalls how five years ago he was convinced that he was a clone of Spider-Man and left New York while the real clone resumed the life of Peter Parker. Having come back and gotten revenge against the Jackal, he discovered that he was the real Spider-Man all along. Since the clone has taken over his Peter Parker identity and retired as Spider-Man, Ben Riley wants to get a fresh start in both his civilian and costume identity. Uh, on a nearby rooftop, Ben begins to take off his costume when his spider sense goes off. Um, where's my spider... Scar- uh... Here's a spider sense. It's ting, 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 a lid, ting, 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 a lid. Uh, warning him of a nearby helicopter passing by. As he goes for cover, Ben wonders what kind of threat the helicopter may pose. Suddenly, a magnetic device is dropped from the tra- I, chopper. I on, love this. Onto yeah. the roof of a van driving down the street. I know, it's like so like fast and furious or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a, a giant magnet just swinging down with guys on, on top of it. Like it's it's over the top, but it's yeah, it's brilliant at the same time. Inside the device are two armed men who begin pumping bullets into the roof of the van. Inside, a mo- a mobster named Orlando Canor and his partner Vic begin to panic over what to do next. That's when the Scarlet Spider swings in to stop the gunman. However, before attacking the gunman, something warns the wall crawler against attacking the gunman directly. Ah, uh, yeah, that'd be his spider sense. It's ting 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 a lid ting 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 a lid. However, when he tries to incapacitate them with his impact webbing, he still manages to set off the smoke bombs they have rigged on their bodies. I love how um, also as well, we're not that far into this story, but we've already seen to full effect the impact webbing and the spider stingers. Um, I think it's great. Uh, You know, this is the defining difference between Scarlet Spider and Spider-Man. But yeah. You think that's on purpose though too, because since it is a number one issue in case someone just picked this up. Scar- this is their first Scarlet Spider story. They're like, oh yeah, he has different stuff than Spider-Man. Oh, absolutely. It, it's it, right akin to those older issues of Wolverine. Every single time I've got adamantium um, uh, claws and bones and I've got a healing factor. I mean, he, he announces it every single time. But, and, I'm, um, <laughs> this is kinda... and I'm the best at what I do. What I do is yeah. pretty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, you're a bit of a broken record, Logan. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh... By this point, uh, Kano and Vic have pulled over the car and are making a run for it. When the Scarlet Spider tries to leap onto the helicopter, but it and the gunman have disappeared in the thick clouds of smoke. Soon the authorities arrive on the scene and begin searching the van, discovering that it contains stolen computer processors. <sighs> Too technical for me. Just, just <laughs> very smart technology. <laughs> 1995 processors, you know, they're probably like <laughs> half the size of that van. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the, spark, uh, the Scarlet Spider gets down on himself for helping a pair of thieves and wonders why he bothers. Meanwhile, the armed men contact their leader, the new Dr. Octopus, to report their oh. failure. Oh, remember her? What was that? That was yeah. the last month, was it? Or a month or two ago? Or Yeah. I liked it. I mean, I like her. And it, it's good to see her back. I think she's, yeah. She's got legs. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My probably most proud moment of a pun I've ever made. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Every, everyone's going to have to suck it. Suck it, Connor. <laughs> and, uh, suck uh, it, Miller. Okay. <laughs> uh, see? See? Good pun. Now, pretty soon, Wilf is going to be telling you to suck it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she is upset that the Scarlet Spider is interfering with her plans once again and smashes the monitor with her mechanical arms. Uh, 
temper problem. She's just gonna have to. She's just gonna have to replace that screen again. Smash <laughs> it. That's what that stuff in the van was for. No, that's true. Uh, her assistant, the computer program known as the Master Programmer, tells her to ignore the spider and reminds her that they need to get the stolen components in order to carry out their plans. Hmm, was there a Master Planner saw a few years ago? Who was he? Hmm. <laughs> Um, later, the Scarlet Spider returns to the penthouse apartment of his friend, Seward Trainer. He is upset that he is not doing very well as a crime fighter. However, Seward reminds him that being a crime fighter was Peter Parker's specialty and that Ben will have to learn to adapt to his own. Okay, right now, yes. Ben thinks he's the yeah. original Peter. So, like, as far as Ben th- knows, for the first 150 issues, he was Spider-Man. So, it's like, you know, I used to do yeah, that. Exactly. Who think who do you think? Who do so that doesn't yeah, that is actually very that's wrong. I know. <laughs> but maybe sewage is just wrong. I mean sewage is just, you know, we know better. Listen, you fool, who do you think got the tablet of time away from Silvermane? Me. <laughs> who do you think had six arms and battled Morbius? Me. <laughs> yeah. Uh really well I was gonna say really. Riley agrees and thanks Seward for putting him up while he tries to get his life together. Trainer offers Ben the chance to work for him, but Ben wants to get his own job and earn his keep. Why would you just work for... If Seward can pay you, why wouldn't you just work for Seward? He knows you're the Scarlet Spider. You don't have to make mm. stupid excuses for running off. I mean, he gets he gets a crash at his pad. He's, he's being offered a job. Jeez, come on, just take it. I mean, not like he's just handing you money if you work, you know. Do, yeah, exactly. That's more. right. Putting you to... Yeah, exactly. However, he thinks of some way that Seward Trainer can do... However, he thinks of some way that Seward Trainer can do to help him. Meanwhile, Orlando, Canor, and Vic report back to their employer, the crime boss known as Jason So. Mm. Uh, and no kids, he's not, no kids, he's not a general. Hi. Yeah. General So's chicken. Hi. Um, hey? General So's chicken. Oh, uh, actually, I don't know that. Oh. <laughs> no, is that a big franchise over there? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, you get, like, Chinese food a lot of times, like General So's, yeah. Uh, well, I... Sorry, guy, I know you don't eat chicken. You eat kangaroo. We know that. That's it. That's that's it. I think kangaroos or bust. But this so guy, I mean, I wouldn't want to buy chicken from him. He's a pretty mean fella. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, and he's got a scar over his eye as well. That's how you know he's evil. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, he is angry that they failed to deliver the computer processors uh, the computer processors that they had stolen. He places blame on Vic and orders his men to gun him down for his failure. Bloody hell. Uh, the next day, Ben Rowley goes job hunting, but is turned down for every job he applies for. His last stop is a trendy nightclub called Club Noir, which, Ooh, is, looking, la la. which is looking for a waiter. At first, he is turned down for not having any references. However, when a waitress named Rachel trips, Ben's spider sense allows him to catch the drink tray before the beverage can be spilled. Joey, the bar manager, is so impressed by this, he hires Ben right on the spot. My gosh. If only you could get jobs like that. (laughs) I know. Uh, Later that day, the helicopter owned by Dr. Octopus reappears and uses its magnetic crane to steal the van filled with the stolen computer processors (laughs) from the police impound yard. The Scarlet Spider has been waiting, and this time, with a special gas mask made by Seward Trainer, figures that he is prepared for the thieves this time. However, when he boards the helicopter, uh, it turns out that the minions of Dr. Octopus have replaced their smoke bombs in favor of electrified suits. Mm. (laughs) Stunned in the submission, the web slinger is helpless when the thieves push him out of the helicopter. Thankfully, the Scarlet Spider is able to save his life by catching the cop the chopper with the web line. Unfortunately, I, I, I just sorry, Phil. I just got to say one of my favorite lines from this issue. Um, ben gets zapped, and he just says, "You mean I brought my gas mask for nothing?" <laughs> it's just <laughs> so know. funny. So funny. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the thieves see this and begin trying to shake the hero off of their vehicle. When this doesn't work, they start shooting at the spider, forcing him to let go. In order to save himself from a lethal fall, he quickly spins himself a makeshift hang glider out of his webbing to slow his descent. Yeah, but baby. I like I like that because it's like it reminds you that Ben and Peter are smart because you could tell as he's falling, he's like calculating, you know, how like how much time he has before mm. he hits the ground, and you know. Yeah, and also it's not often you see 
um, him fashion objects out of the webbing. Like it, it's coincidental that I was looking at um, the old Superman versus Spider Man for one of our shows, mm-hmm. and Spider Man um, builds himself some water skis. So this was very reminiscent of that. Oh, but that yeah. was back, in, yeah, back in the eighties or whatever. Um, but this is a reminiscent of that. I, I love it. Hang glider, and then he, he's got some skis as well. Boy, how how skilled is he? He's building a hang glider while he's falling in midair. I mean, he's pretty good with the webbing. Yeah, I know. Um, so, yeah, uh, flying over a nearby lake, he then fashioned some water skis to finally stop himself. By this time, the news of the daring theft has reached Jason So, who is furious to learn that the processors were stolen out from police custody. When he pulls up to Club Noir, he asks his manager what has been going on with his business while he was gone. Joey tells Mr. So that he just hired a new waiter named Ben Riley. <laughs> so yes, kids. What the hell? He's working yeah. for the crime boss. Oh, 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 what a twist. Love it. Um, yeah, I thought this first issue was good. Um, I didn't mind. I thought the art was pretty good mostly. But there were little things like that Canor guy, Orlando Canor. He looks kind of different a lot, um, and it, it's, there's a little inconsistency with him there. Um, and Mister So, not so much because he's got the identifying, you know, um, disfigurement or scar on his face, so you can always tell him. But yeah, like there's some people like Orlando. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. You mean from issue to issue? I, even this issue, oh, I was yeah. like, look, I was like, look, and definitely from issue to issue because the later issues, he looks um, a little bit more taller and bigger, and mm. you know, more imposing. Like the very first scene of him here in the car with Vic is like, if you look at that, and then if you look at him at the end, that last page with Doctor, with not not Doctor So, I was about to say Doctor Evil <laughs> with Mister So, they look, he looks just so different. But anyway, I mean, that's a, <laughs> but that's a small quibble. I mean, I. I I enjoyed this. Uh, I thought it was really cool and had a nice little twist incorporating Ben Riley's um, Ben Riley's persona into into the mix with so yeah, like, yeah, like this artist. Like I wasn't familiar, you know. Besides this uh, issue, I really never heard of uh, Paris Coronas. Coronas, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I did. I'm just looking this up. Looks like he might have done some work on some Marvel Comics presents. Okay, his Scarlet Spider is quite nice. Uh-huh. I like Scarlet. It looks pretty cool. Um, and, geez, my gosh, Peter's – not Peter's, Ben's hair. Bloody – I can't talk because my hair is bloody wild now, but, like, his is just terrible. Like, it's – Oh, the I'm mullet, just, the mullet. I'm just – yeah, I'm just staring at it now, just like, wow. Dude, that's, he's, he's, that, he's, that. he is just a um, – he's just a victim of the 90s fashion because, I mean, even your buddy Superman yeah. had a mullet at this point. Imagine what it would feel like putting a mask over that. I know. Yeah, I can't comfortable down the back of your neck <laughs> just like <laughs> anyway um but yeah but what did you think of this uh phil especially like with the club noir um I, uh, the the processes what did you think of all that i mean i liked it it was a fun entertaining story but yeah there's a lot of you know coincidences here like you know ben the only mm. place ben could get hired is for like the crime boss you know mm. yeah 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 it's um, it was a still enjoyable issue. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed it as well. Uh, uh, I was just looking at the notes on the on this on the web page here for this issue. It's the one that I always I keep chuckling at. It says all technological references made in the story were considered cutting edge when this story was written in 1995. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've got to remember that. I guess <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Um, oh, I mean, even later on, I mean. You and I talking about it. Like, it's no spoilers because yeah. you know these are old stories. But the whole VR thing, like that, was to them like cutting edge. And oh yeah, you, but you look at like, like today, today standards. Like I just saw on the news, there's this kind of debate about Mark Zuckerberg's new Facebook gog- uh, not goggles or, or sunnies or something, and and the breach of privacy that has. And oh. look at the technology where we've come now. You know, mm-hmm. everyone's going to have a Tony Stark pair of sunnies <laughs> it's crazy i think they started making those yeah like you can get like a yeah. pair of glasses yeah and you can like i guess you're like your phone screen and stuff on there and yeah like it's crazy uh, all right so should we get to this next one yep yeah amazing my two, my two favorite covers were the web one and yeah then, then this one the amazing one i knew you'd love this one. Oh yeah of course it's mark bagley uh <laughs> 
All right, so Amazing Scarlet Spider number one, also November 95, by writer Tom DeFelco and Mike Lackey, penciler Mark Bagley, inker Larry Malstead, colorist Bob Sharon and Malibu Color, letterer Bill Oakley, editor Tom DeFelco, and the, oh, and the title Violated by the Virtual. No. Oh. And no kids, we're not, talking about, we're not talking about Lilith's porn now. <laughs> Uh, uh, all right. So, a facility owned by the new Dr. Octopus has been attacked by the minions of the crime boss, Jason So. As they clash with her armored minions, Orlando Canor, fine looking different always, finds that they have come for what they can't come for a specially constructed virtual reality visor. Dr. Octopus is informed of the attack by her minions. Her only concern is that the technology doesn't fall into the hands of her enemies. Learning that the attackers are still in the lab, she orders her minions to continue fighting and sets the facility to self-destruct. <laughs> Damn, that's that's a hell of a uh, retirement package. She really doesn't. She does not care about her property at all. Man, that's that's one tough HR. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, the Scarlet Spider is swinging through the city. He cannot believe that he is the only web slinger in New York City. Something he had wished to happen for years. He is out looking for the hideout of Dr. Octopus when suddenly his attention is drawn towards an explosion. <gasps> I know, it's like, oh, I wonder what that is. Yeah. The wall crawler goes to investigate and finds himself attacked by surviving minions of Dr. Octopus. They're trying to get away with the virtual reality visor, but the Scarlet Spider easily defeats them and takes the item away. Unsure what he has, the spider discovers that it is similar to the VR headset created by his friend, Sewer Trainer. When the police arrive on the scene, the Scarlet Spider decides to take off to figure out what he has with him. Watching this from a nearby alley is Orlando Canor, who tells his surviving men that they need to report this back to Jason So. Uh, later, the Scarlet Spider returns to Club Noir, where he, ha- he works as a waiter in his civilian identity of Ben Riley. He doesn't like the job, but he needs the money in order to start his new life. When he arrives, the manager of the club is berating the cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, he's pretty mean. He's a, a Gordon Ramsay. I know, seems like it. Uh, with his clothes reeking of smoke, because remember he was at a building, exploded building, he decides to slip out of sight when the manager complains about something smelling like it is burning. While back at the headquarters of Dr. Octopus, she is furious to learn that her VR headset has been stolen. She orders her minions to find out who has re- who was responsible for the attack and recover her stolen technology. Alone, Dr. Octopus goes to her computer to confer with the master programmer. The programmer is already aware that the headset has been stolen, but assures her that they will be able to track it once it has been activated. When she asks if he has any other good news, he tells her that he does. At that m- <laughs> but Meanwhile, <laughs> at that moment at the vault prison in Colorado, <sighs> Ray's favorite and soon, to be Lil's, yeah. and soon to be Lil's favorite next year, Norton Fester is a free man after serving time for his crimes. Huh. Um... Which I he looks again. He, it, this is the same guy from the latter issue, right? Because he looks very different again. He looks a little bit more slight of build. I know. Yeah. yeah. Again, yeah. Different artists. And yeah. It's yeah. Just, mm, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, the looter's been all over the place. Uh, he, he appeared in a, like, what was it? Amazing Spider-Man 36. He did some spectacular oh. Spider-Man, Marvel team up. And then I remember he was like, I don't know if he was like, he was like a homeless guy for a while in an issue of Web of Spider-Man. Him and, him and Spider-Man fought outside Aunt May's house. Wow. He's unfortunately got a very mediocre name, the Looter. I know. I think when he first showed up, he got his powers from Meteor. So I think he called himself yeah. Meteor Man or something. That's that's even better. Yeah. I mean... It's, it's it is. Not, I reckon, I reckon it, the Looter just sounds so boring. I know. Yeah. It's just like... Yeah. Anybody can be a Looter. Uh... Let me see. I'm gonna find where I left off here. Uh, oh yeah. Ba-ba-ba. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, Morton Fester is a free man for serving his. T- he didn't even break out. He served his time. Yeah. As, Fest- hey. <laughs> As Fester leaves the prison, he is greeted by a limo surround summoned by the master programmer. The passenger inside offers Fester a large sum of money in order to enlist his services. Seeing the large Ooh. stack of money is all that it takes to get Fester's attention. He just got out of prison. <laughs> And he's literally, it's like, oh, yeah. He's not even yeah, off um, the prison grounds yet. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah let's do some more crime. <laughs> yeah, you think what the uh, the prison wardens would be thinking as they kind of look in the distance. Uh, it's a, li- it's a limo, yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, ba- 
See, that makes more sense. Back in the day, that vault was like in the middle of Colorado, like in the middle of like nowhere, you know, just like empty, like forests and mm-hmm. stuff. You know, nowadays, I think like the raft is like right off of like, you know, right like in the river in New York, which, you know, mm-hmm. just right off the shore of like the like the biggest city in the country. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> again, the vault made more sense. It was like in the middle of like empty territory. You know, there was not yep. lots of make, for- Yeah, exactly. You want to protect. And, yeah. Yeah. Protect your citizens. Uh, well, back in New York, Ben Riley is slaving away in the kitchen at Club Noir. He is interrupted by Joey, who has come to check how Ben has been doing on the job. Ben is great. Oh, how how he's getting women throwing themselves at him. Anyway. I know. <laughs> ben is grateful for her helping him get his job. Just then, Ben's spider sense goes off, warning him of danger. He notices Orlando Canor rushing through the kitchen and recognizes him from a previous robbery. See last issue. Uh, Joey's disappointed that Ben isn't paying attention to her. And when he asks who Orlando is, she doesn't know. <laughs> Maybe she was getting the wrong message because, you know, she's all trying to flirt with him. He's like, oh, no, who's that big guy? Who's that big guy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who's that big masculine guy? <laughs> uh I it, me, that meanwhile too, you know, five minutes later he's probably like, oh, why can't I find a woman? It's like you know, one was just all over. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, uh, and they're not. It's not like they're shy as well. Like, oh no, um, her and the other the the neighbor he has. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, oh yeah. They I forget how oh, what the count is. They get, they try to give him so many like different women and like mm. from now until like the end of his time as Spider Man. Yeah, puts uh, Matt Murdock to shame. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, inside Jason So's office, Kanor explains their failure to recover the VR headset. Even the theft of more computer processors is little to appease Jason So's disappointment. Orlando promises to do that better, but So doesn't want to hear it. Once his subordinate has left, Jason contacts his master, who isn't overly concerned about this recent setback, as he is confident that they will succeed anyway. Oh, yeah, because as, as we'll find out at the end of the spectacular issue. Yes, Jason So is working for someone too, so mm-hmm. wait for yeah. next month. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be war, kids. <laughs> uh, later, Ben Riley is heading home after a long day at work. As he has been crashing at Sewer Trainer's couch, Riley looks forward to getting a place of his own. On his way in, he holds the elevator for a woman named Carrie Bradley. With a very sexy leg. She, um, oh, I know. She you opened know, that door. <laughs> yeah, with that leg. <laughs> <laughs> who is a new tenant in the building. They engage in small talk until Carrie has to get off the elevator. As she gets off, hey, old Ben can't help but find himself <laughs> in... I've been working with Little Hellfire too long. <laughs> bad influence. Uh, ben can't help but find himself interested in her and wonders if he should reconsider moving out. When he enters his friend's apartment, Ben shows Seward the VR headset that he recovered earlier that day. Seeing the device, excited trainer, who tells him that it is the most advanced piece of VR technology that he has ever seen. He wants to test it right away, despite Ben Rowley's reservations. Seward brushes this off, however. As soon as he activates the device, it is instantly detected by the master programmer, who then tells Dr. Octopus and assures her that he will deal with it. As Seward explores virtual reality, he is suddenly attacked by a sentry, calling itself VR-37. As Trainer battles for his life, the weapons he and VR-37 utilize manifest in reality right before the astonished eyes of Ben Rowley. Yeah. I know it's the Marvel Universe, but I'm like, what was that? (laughs) Yeah. I'm just wondering. I was trying to time place this. I probably got it totally wrong, but are we still far away from – we're still far away from The Matrix, right? That was late 90s. Yeah, I think – yeah, wasn't The Matrix was like 98 or 99. Yeah, so, I mean, we're at least three years away from The Matrix. Oh, okay. Because this was, for me, like, I I, I thought it was pretty cool how Seward could conjure up these things in the VR, you know, and he's almost doing it similar to like in the matrix yeah um but the the added difference is that it's actually manifesting yes. in reality so yeah just weird oh yeah matrix 4 coming out yes have you seen the preview looks awesome i say a little bit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i've been telling my son who's never seen any of the matrix movies i'm like oh we gonna have to watch the first three kid again yes absolutely uh as trainer battles for his life oh uh, yeah hearing his friend screaming in pain ben grabs seward's own vr helmet and wires in so he can help his friend ben's avatar appears wearing his scarlet spider costume and tries to pry seward out of vr 37's crushing grasp seeing that the spider is now in virtual reality she orders vr 37 to destroy the intruder to this end the sentry creates virtual replicas of dr octopus <clears throat> 
Venom, Carnage, and Stunner to fight off the Web Slinger. Seward handled these new threats, summoning virtual weapons and armor to face them. This gives the Scarlet Spider a chance to deal with VR-37. The Sentry responds by taking on the form of Spider-Man, but this does little to phase the Scarlet Spider. This only serves to anger the Scarlet Spider into beating VR-37 in the submission. Unfortunately, before the simulation can be shut down, Seward is struck in the eyes by the Carnage Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing, yeah, seeing that Seward is injured, Ben shuts down the computers, but when he gets the trainer's body, he's hor- horrified to discover that Seward is now in a catatonic state. Yeah, when you see eyes rolled to the back of their head like that, you know that your buddy's in trouble. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Now, what did, what did you make of this issue? Um, again, I, again, I liked it. Again, it's Bagley art, so I mean, that, day, that always, uh, you know, I can look. I can look past a lot of stuff for uh, Mark Bagley art. Again, it's good, but again, I mean, we'll get to this next month too. But it's like, I don't know the whole v- the thing where it's like, oh, make VR real. So it's like, so shouldn't that just be like holograms or something? You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I, I like I liked it as well, and, and as you, similar to you, I think much of it has to do with Bagley's art. It just it's just really nice to look at, um, and his layouts are great. Um, yeah, this I don't think the story is too convoluted you know just yet it's it's got enough premise in it and um it's it's basically so we've got two crime lords they're after this tech um but it's it's interesting for this issue to see what the, that tech does you know the virtual reality um so i love the fight there between you know you got you got the old enemies there venom carnage and for some reason stunner i mean i know why she's there but like she's yeah. not exactly in amongst you know the league of Doctor Octopus and Venom. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. uh, um, so it was good. A, a bit more involvement from Seward Trainer, uh, and again, we still get more stuff from Ben Riley too. A little bit of bit of love life happening there. Potential. Uh, he gets he gets hit on twice uh, in the space of a couple of pages. Um, but yeah, and then again, there's the little um, dangled carrot in front of us of uh, Mister So's working for someone. So a pretty solid issue, as you know. I mean, oh, yeah. look, Phil, we're not talking about this virtual mortality. We're not talking about timeless classic story, you know. But it's just fun. It's, oh, yeah. it's fun enough. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but yeah. The uh, Swiss Seward at the end, you know, you said his eyes rolled in the back of his head. Yes. Yeah, so either, your buddy's mind is either stuck in virtual reality, or you've had like, a crazy weekend, uh, a la Little Hellfire. Hey, someone <laughs> to pay good money for that in Florida. <laughs> Yeah. It also gave me a little bit of vibes of um, a little bit of a riff of Nightmare on Elm Street. We're oh, talking about yeah. horror movies and that whole thing about sucking the dream, sucking the VR, uh, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, wasn't there one where they were kind of, they used like a computer? Was that was that Lawnmower Man? There was something. I oh, swear yeah. There was, yeah. Yeah. Lawnmower Man, again, cutting edge technology there. <laughs> I know. It's, the I can't remember how many years it's been since I've seen Lawnmower Man. It's probably been over 20 years since I've seen Oh, that yeah. yeah. Me too. I can't remember it. Um, another, just another little last interesting point here. Interesting that that VR Sentinel or whatever it is takes the, the guise of Spider-Man. Look, I, I don't think it was that essential, um, but I can see what um, the writer was doing as um, Dezago, what was his name? Tom, Todd? Tom Dezago. Uh, I don't uh, know if Dezago... Wait, let me see. Uh, this one... Oh, no, this one was written by DeFalco and uh, Mike DeFalco. Wacky. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I can kind of see wh- where they're heading for that, but it wasn't... I don't think it was that essential to have... No, no. You know, yeah, him as Spider-Man. But it was fun to see, I guess. It was just, quit comparing me to Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, that was it. That was the only reason for it. Yeah. They thought they were going to throw him for a loop, and they didn't. Uh, All right. We're going to get to the next one. Yep. All right, all right. So, mm-hmm. Scarlet Spider number one, part adjective list. That's right. List. Part three again, November ninety five. Writer, our buddy Howard Mackey. Yeah. And Todd Dezago. Ah. Uh, penciler Gil Kane. Again. Oh, nice. Inker Tom Palmer. Colorist uh, uh, Chi Wang. Uh, Malibu color. Yeah, colors G Wang and Malibu Color. Letterer, Richard Starkings, Comic Craft, Editor, Bub Buddy Bub Buddyansky. Mm-hmm. And this one's titled To Thine Own Self. Uh 
Following a battle with the new female Dr. Octopus in cyberspace, the Scarlet Spider rushes his friend Sewer Trainer to a hospital as he has been in a comatose state. Again, if his mind got fried in there, what's the hospital going to do? Yeah, that's true. It's not exactly their forte. Um, someone, but if, yeah, I guess I that's mean, the only. I mean, if nothing else, I guess they can keep his body alive, you know, with an IV and stuff, but it's, you know. Wouldn't he like go to, I don't know his reputation, wouldn't he go to the Fantastic Four or something? Wouldn't that be worth doing? Maybe, but then, I mean, he's not, spi- you know, he's the Scarlet yeah, Spider, no. so you kind of have to, you know, have to explain, you know, who you are. True. I mean, if it, this went on long enough, I'd say, yeah, go to the Fantastic Four, but mm. I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, and, the, and at this point, isn't oh, isn't Reed Richards, well, quote-unquote, dead? Oh, okay, this is around that time. I think, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after delivering Seward to the emergency room, the Scarlet Spider waits for 40 minutes for a prognosis. <laughs> <laughs> he is told that Seward is physically fine, but soon learns that he is catatonic. The doctors were forced to contact the authorities, but the spider leaves before they have a chance to question him. All right. Meanwhile, a hired assassin called the Pro arrives outside a large oh, mansion geez. on the North Shore. Of Lo- is that is that name in the same league as the Looter Ray? <laughs> yeah, that is terrible. <laughs> the Pro, come on. Uh, I know. I'd be like, are you a hired assassin, or you know, or like, you know, or something else? A pro- <laughs> prostitute. <What are> you? <laughs> exactly. How much? <laughs> oh my! <laughs> there we go, Wilf. New drop. How much? Slow <laughs> down. We need this for drops. <laughs> All right, kids, and always remember when we talk '90s comics. The yin to Dark Ox Yang. <laughs> uh, Checking his devices, he quickly learns about the security systems on the property. A lot of technology this time, kids. He approaches the gate and incapacitates the guard and goes inside. He then intentionally sounds the alarm, leaving his target alone as his bodyguards go and investigate the source of the alarm. Getting the drop on his target, the pro orders him to cease his operations and leave the country, sparing his life but telling the man that he will be back if he is hired to kill him later. On his way out, the pro gets a job offer to assassinate mobster jason so boy i wonder who the pro is going to come into contact with if he's uh goes after so yeah <laughs> uh, um at that moment ben rally is leaving sewer trainer's apartment after a shower and feels like he can handle waiting for news on sewer trainer he wants to go searching for dr octopus but without any leads such a hunt will be pointless on his way out, he sees his neighbor, Carrie Bradley, fighting <laughs> off a man in a padded suit. Bradley pulls the man off of her, but learns that she hired him to act. Oh, it's the, it says he, they, she hired him, but it's just the suit, I think. So, uh, the big- yeah, I was about to ask, because later on we see a guy in the suit, and I thought over here that she's just got the suit. Yeah, I think it's like just, just the suit, yeah. Yeah, because you don't see, cause he's pummeling. <laughs> ben Riley's pummeling the suit, but you don't see the face, yeah. Uh, yeah, for her self-defense class, and she, she was in no real danger. Seeing that Ben was embarrassed by all this, she tells him that if that it was sweet and asks him to join her for coffee some night. It's an offer that Ben decides to take her up on. So is that coffee coffee, or is that Luke Cage coffee? No. Oh, jeez. It's pretty full of it. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, at the Daily Bugle, Ken Ellis gets an email from his contact but discovers that it is from another unidentified source can you imagine email phil email i know what's the wonders of technology was that this (laughs) it was that this issue where he's like you know proclaiming to himself like you know all the greatness of this new email that he doesn't have to go out and (laughs) meet his contacts they can just email him yeah Yeah, exactly this is it this this futuristic thing called email the tip is regarding a meeting of underworld types at club noir Later that evening, seeing a story here, he interrupts one of J. Jonah Jameson's rants to drag photographer Angela Yin to take photos uh, for him. While in cyberspace, Dr. Octopus meets with her ally, the master programmer. Although she wants to see Jason so dead, she wonders why the programmer tipped off Ken Ellis at the bugle. The master programmer explains that Ellis is going to send a message to their rivals as a warning of what happens if they are crossed in the future. As they discuss their plans, they are unaware that Sewer Trainer is watching them. As he watches, he's alive. I know, he's alive in there. Yeah. As he watches, Trainer realizes that there may be a benefit to his mind being trapped in cyberspace. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, 
later that evening, Jason So he's going to be dodging bullets. <laughs> yeah. Later that evening, Jason So is hosting a meeting with a group of underworld leaders. Acting as the waiter for this meeting is Ben Riley, who is still distracted by thoughts of Seward Trainer. That's when So's assistant Orlando Canor tells Jason that he has to call on his private line. As he excuses himself, Jason bumps into Riley, causing the waiter to yeah. spill wine on his suit. You don't do that to the big boss. No. You, you bumbling fool. Especially like him, man. Yeah. Furious, Jason tells Orlando to deal with this, and Ben finds himself fired on the spot. In his office, Jason So speaks with his mysterious employer. This man warns Jason that Dr. Octopus is targeting him for his involvement in the thefts of various computer processors that are vital to his plans. So is unconcerned as security at Club Noir is high due to the number of mobsters in the building. However, outside the building, two of the guards are incapacitated by the pro. He then thre- threatens them with a detonation device so he can get them to talk. Back inside, Ben Riley wonders what he is going to do now that he is unemployed. That's when Sewer Trainer's face appears on the digital prompt of one of the c- club's cash registers. <laughs> How cool is that? He, he can just, like, form himself in any electronic device, it seems. I know. Oh, you got fired? Here. Here, I'll pop the drawer. Taking a run. <laughs> However, before you can explain what happened to him, Seward suddenly disappears, be- leaving Ben to wonder if he hallucinated the whole thing. <laughs> Suddenly, his spider sense begins going off. He then notices Ken Ellis being barred at the door by a bouncer and is concerned about being spotted. Because, yeah, he's concerned about them thinking he's Peter Parker. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is a nice little dynamic, again, because it's like he's, you've got to keep – he's got to keep on his toes with that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Because it's – yeah. Just wait for two two months, kids. He'll, he'll deal with that problem, sort of. <laughs> when Orlando tells Jason so that Ellis and his photographer are here, so invites them in. Ben is relieved when they walk by without Ken noticing him. This is when the two guards outside enter the room. With the, plos ex- with the pros explosive charges attached to the back of their heads, they have been forced to try and eliminate their boss with grenades. So is rushed to safety. Ben leaps under cover to change into the Scarlet Spider, unseen. However, he is witnessed leaping away by Angela Yin, who recognizes Ooh. Ben Riley as Peter Parker. Uh-oh. Undercover work. <laughs> Meanwhile, the pro manages to get a hold of So. That's when Dr. Octopus appears on a nearby screen and she reveals that she sent the pro after him. That's when the Scarlet Spider leaps in and stops the pro from eliminating his target by knocking him out a nearby window and stringing him up by the arm. With his free hand, the pro lobs a grenade back inside the club. (laughs) This allows the pro to escape while the Scarlet Spider is pulling Ken and Angel into safety. When Ellis asks the spider for an interview, the hero escapes. Oh, is it the one where he goes, yeah, right, for the guy who gave, named me the Scarlet Spider? Yeah. yeah. He's still he's still cut about that. Jeez. It's like, then name yourself something else, dude. Yeah. Actually, I think it's a pretty cool name, but I know, anyway. it's not bad. Eat your own, Ben, ben Riley. <laughs> Later, Ben is emptying out his locker when Jason So comes and tells him that Ben is being rehired, but this time not as a waiter, but as his bodyguard. Ooh. Although he accepts the job offer, Ben wonders what he's getting himself into. <laughs> So, I mean, we get kind of yeah. light, nice little cliffhangers on a lot of these. Oh, no, I think so as well. And, and there's... um. Oh, you think well, so? <laughs> I think I think so <laughs> as, well, as well. But, I mean, similar to the last issue, it's not too... There's a lot of stuff happening. Like, you know, they've got to juggle a lot of characters and, and this whole new dynamic about Steward Trainer being in electronic devices. You've got um, Ellis and, and the photographer coming in as well. You've got this new... Again, just introduced in this issue, right? The pro. So all these new characters, and they all kind of they all serve their purpose, which mm-hmm. is really cool. But it's just, I guess, it's very different from other comics that you might be uh, more familiar with, in the the sense that uh, the story, for want of a better word, is a lot cl- is told a lot more cleaner. Um, but there's just so many little threads here, and and I don't think that's a, necessarily a bad thing, but. It certainly gives a different kind of vibe when when you read like this this arc, and I don't know whether that vibe is the just nineties esque, but um, yeah, it's different. But it was it was entertaining. I liked it. I mean, again, action scene. I thought the art was was cool. I mean, Gil Kane. Um, a lot of it actually reminded me of Tom Palmer's inks as well. Oh, yeah. uh, um, as that kind of look, uh, Ben Riley looks very different. He does he does Ben Riley's. Scarlet Spider's face, quite different. It's a bit more round. Yeah. Um, looks like a helmet. 
but yeah, um, yeah, it was it was good. What, what did you reckon? I mean, again, I'm liking it's entertaining. I, it, it's kind of it. A lot of it is like you know, it's a different setting. Like they wanted, like again, they wanted to do an event like Age of Apocalypse, so they kind of you know, Scarlet Spider. It's kind of a Spider Man like character, but you know, now he's a yeah. waiter. It's you know, it's a much different than the Daily Bugle and you know mm-hmm. what you're used to. So yeah, I mean, it was like it was a nice little diversion for two months. You know, something different. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and as you said, the, these new scenarios of him working for Club Noir, which it seemed as almost as if they were kind of trying to establish that, um, that, what is it, the bar as, as maybe a, a regular thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it works really well here. Well, don't get too attached to it, kid. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, should we get to the last one? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Spectacular Scarlet Spider number one from November 1995. Uh, writer Todd DeZago by himself. Ooh. Oh, going on his own. That's right. Uh, penciler Sal Buscema. So someone's getting right crossed across the <laughs> Always. Uh, <laughs> anchor Jimmy Paul Miotti. Colorist John Calise and Malibu Color. Letterer Clem Robbins. Editor Eric Fien. Uh Oh, jeez. Okay. This has to be the most punniest title we've had so far this week. Okay. Ready for this one? Yeah. Between a rock and a hard drive. Oh my god! God, <laughs> that's pretty cool, actually. So bad, it's good. I was going to say, who's writing this, Matt Kona? <laughs> uh, all right. Doctor Octopus has recruited a number of individuals for cybernetic enhancements. Among these test subjects is Norton Fester, the supervillain known as the Looter. As he trains with his teammates, Override and Aura, the Doctor examines them examines him closely of all with his previous oh, over work. sorry it's override is it that's even worse yeah it's override yeah no yeah overdrive comes later oh. during brand new day now yeah no override and aura who, oh, that's who terrible i mean some of these characters don't last but these two last at least until like the end of the 90s so okay i mean i don't mind aura i mean she's got a pretty funky power set anyway mm-hmm. oh so ray doesn't mind the uh the character that's female in a skin tight outfit okay <laughs> But no, yeah, I know. Really. Over, over, overrides kind of ridiculous. I know. Oh, silly. Doesn't even make sense. I mean, he takes over any mechanical object, but if there's no computer within that object, how does how do you how do you take control of it? I know. Like, how, like does, any how does he take control thing? of the guns? You know? I, I know. I know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Anyway, might as well just say magnetic something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Exactly. Uh, the looter anger gives him an edge, but his teammates gain the upper hand when the trio becomes more argumentative. Dr. Octopus puts an end to the training session so she can make adjustments that are cybernetics. As she does so, nobody notices the face of Sewer Trainer appearing on one of the computer screens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you, hey, do you, hey, do you have a screensaver of your dad? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very weird wallpaper you got there. Trainer isn't the only spy, as her plans for the evening are heard by Ooh. Joe Wade, an FBI agent who's been working undercover Whoa. as one of the doctor's henchmen. Keep an eye on Joe Wade, kids. Go, Joe. Especially in the next two months. Uh, uh, elsewhere, the Scarlet Spider swings Oh, over. sorry. Can we just stop there? Yeah, well? no. I love the, the little uh, red herring. He thinks he gets caught out by Dr. Octopus, but it's a guy just holding a lot of noodles. <laughs> like, I don't know what they are, pipes or something. Yeah. <laughs> just oh, did you catch hilarious. that too? And, and it's a red-headed guy named Jimmy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, elsewhere, the Scarlet Spider swings across the city, thinking about how crazy his life has become ever since he discovered that he is the real Spider-Man. Particularly that Sewer Trainer's mind is trapped in cyberspace, and that his employer, Jen- Jason So, is a mob boss. Arriving at the hospital, the spider changes back into Ben Riley and checks on Seward's body. The doctor tells him that there is no change in his condition. Still, Ben begins to talk to Seward's unconscious body. He wonders what he can do about Jason So's offer to become his bodyguard. That's when Seward's face appears on the hospital monitors. <gasps> <laughs> he, inf- <laughs> like, really? uh, he informs Ben that he has been spying on Dr. Octopus and learns and learn that she isn't sending cybernetic warriors to retrieve the experimental components that So stole from her. Riley realizes that he will have to take the job in order to keep an eye on things. Later, Ben goes to the L gym to meet up with his neighbor, Carrie Bradley. He arrives just as she finishes giving a self-defense course. Carrie is happy to see Ben and is looking forward to their coffee date. 
Uh, however, he tells her that he came in person to cancel because he just took up a new job at Club Noir. And look at her face. Look at the face of someone that is totally pissed off. I mean, I would be too. I mean, as she says, I could have made other plans if you just let me know earlier. But yeah, she's really not happy. I know. And then like spoilers next month, she like calls him like a slacker. And it's just like, wait a minute. I, you know, <laughs> I got a job and you yelled at me for, you know, yeah, yeah. saying I had the work. And it's, uh, yeah, but she is upset and wishes that Ben told her sooner so she could make other plans. Rowley tells her that he is not intentionally blowing her off and intends to make it up to her. But she walks away without listening. Later at Club Noir, Jason so arranges for his assistant, Orlando Canor, to deliver the stolen components to their mysterious employer. He that- just, I swear he grows every month as well. Like he's massive. <laughs> he's massive now. He's even got folds in the back of his neck now. Like what's happened? Ster- steroids. <laughs> steroids. He ruined it up. Uh-huh. That's when. Uh, that's when Ben Rally enters to start his first shift as So's bodyguard. He is asked to wait and watches as Canor is sent with a briefcase full of components. Ben tries to tag the briefcase with a spider tracer, but Rachel, one of the club's bartenders, gets in the way. When she gives Jason So a drink, he doesn't like how it tastes, and he tosses it in her face and warns her that ah! she will be out of a job if she and the bartender screw up his drink again. <laughs> oh gosh, she got she got hard liquor in her eyes. That's terrible. I mean, you must be making good money to be taking that kind of abuse at work. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he then asked. It's like there's no other clubs in New York, <laughs> the biggest city in the like the biggest city in the United States. Yeah, there's no other clubs you can work at. Okay, no, nah, the place to be Noir is the place to be. I guess. Uh, he then asked Ben if he is ready to be So's bodyguard. Meanwhile, outside, the looter, override, and Aura are watching as Orlando leaves the club. The looter tells his teammates to keep so busy while he recovers the stolen technology. After the looter leaves, Override uses his powers to take control of a passing big rig and forces it to crash through the front of Club Noir. Inside, Ben spider is able to alert him in time to get Jason So to safety. While his team... <laughs> this, is, you know, this is like some kind of weird action movie. Uh, while his teammates smash up the bar... Smash it! The looter hacks into the vault in order to get at the computer components. Uh, meanwhile, Ben Rowley gets Jason So to safety and slips away to change into the Scarlet Spider. While he is busy battling Aura and Override, uh, the looter discovers that the vault is empty. When he calls it in, Dr. Octopus is furious to learn that the parts have been moved. Back upstairs, Override uses his powers to make the Scarlet Spider's web shooters spray webbing out of control. That's a pretty good idea. So, I mean... Despite what we said, I think that's a pretty cool oh, yeah. difference. Yeah. I mean, if you could do all, if you could do all machinery, yeah, why not? But yeah. and actually, incidentally, as well, since we're on the last part, as well, it, it, I know Spider Man every from time to time loses his web fluid, but it seems that Scarlet Spider always seems to be out every now and again with his web fluid. Uh, I don't know. It's the stories that we've done. He, he's been short of it a few times before. I, I don't know what's what he has to do to kind of rectify that. But. Yeah, I don't know, because I know Spider-Man would keep some extra cartridges on his belt, but, I mean, Ben Riley has those pouches. Yeah, exactly. Like it it just seems mind. to be more of an issue for Ben Riley. It's, yeah. I don't know. I think they were, they were kind of to go, trying to go with, like, like back to classic feel, and they just... You know, I think mm. that was one of the themes they felt, like, back in the day. He was always running out of web fluid. Yeah. Oh, just wait in two months when he becomes Spider-Man again. Wait till you see what he's making webbing out of... <laughs> Oh. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Override yeah, makes the web shooter spray webbing out of control. However, the hero turns around on his foe by switching the stingers and forcing him out, uh, and forcing him out with their venom. That's yeah. when the looter comes upstairs to see his teammates are, what his teammates are doing. Seeing the Scarlet Spider, he mistakes him for Spider-Man, viciously attacking the wall crawler. The spider vaguely remembers battling the looter during his early days as Spider-Man. So yeah, so even though Ben Rowland's like, yeah, he has a memory of at least one fight with the looter. So. Yeah, yeah. And funnily enough, everyone seems to see Scarlet Spider as an imposter. The looter sees him as Spider-Man. It's just, uh, yeah, the opposite. Not smart, I know. Still, the Scarlet Spider gains the upper hand against the looter. This prompts the villain to destroy one of the support beams of the club. While the web slinger is reinforcing the ceiling with his webbing, the looter and his allies manage to escape. With the danger over, the spider slips away to change back in the Ben Rally. He explains to Jason So that he was buried under rubble during the fight. 
So buys this story as Ben saved his life. From returning to his office, Jason So contacts his employer uh, yes. to see if he received the stolen components without issue. His employer, Alistair Smythe, oh, did, and he is pleased for the result, showing off his cyber slayers, telling So that he intends to give them a test run. How cool is that? I like that last bit, actually, mm-hmm. seeing Alistair Smythe back and, and a bit of a, a riff on, you know, his original Spider Slayers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. That was, a, that was a good, I think that was a great ending. I think that was um, a pretty good way to kind of cap that off. Oh, yeah, bring it back for month two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as much of a legend as Bashema is, uh, I didn't mind the art, but it, I, t- I much preferred... Number one, I think the Mark Bagley one, part two, yeah. was probably and and I like actually and then and then um, uh, first part yeah. and then yeah and then the third and maybe this one last I don't know but um, that was good a lot of fighting uh, good to see uh, but again not that in not that impressive like villains like in the Looter Aura and Override to, to fight against but um, I, I loved how we took care of Aura. And that was pretty cool. Like he had that impact webbing, but yeah. she better keep that force field open, otherwise she'd be kind of crushed, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was good. What did, what did you make of it? Again, I liked it. Yeah, um, yeah. Sometimes I don't know if this was rushed. Uh, sometimes Sal's art. I mean, I usually a lot of time. I usually like it. Sometimes, yeah. I don't know if it's like the inker and stuff or. Maybe yeah. the colorist or yeah, sometimes it it seems like stuff might bog it down, but mm, because like to be fair, his spectacular Spider Man run, it wasn't any more detailed than this. Actually it probably was less detailed and I think maybe it is the Inca Inca and, and the textures they put on it. because uh, I much love the cleaner, uh the cleaner um Salvage Emma yeah. uh, art in, in the uh spectacular Spider Man. Oh yeah, 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 and um, I, I mean, I like this better than like the Gil Kane stuff. I mean, I know Gil yeah, Kane's like a say. legend, but it's like I don't know. Sometimes yeah. some of his art seems like the figures seem kind of stiff. Sometimes, yeah, I'd, I'd agree. I was being kind to yeah. Gil Kane there because he was a legend, but I think you're, I think you're right. I think, um, yeah, probably the bottom of the pile in this. Well, I think. Well, I think even then, I think he was an older gentleman. So you know, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, I mean. it's... <laughs> the end of the day, it's great to see a lot of Ben Riley's Scarlet Spider action, him doing it, and he's got his own uh, ensemble cast in Sewer Trainer, well, ma- mainly Sewer Trainer, but he's got all these kind of peripheral characters around him now, um, uh, Carrie, Bradley, and uh, and that waitress, and, um, you know, him mixing it with the, with the criminals. Uh, it's pretty cool. But, yeah, Sewer is, is pretty much his uh, staple uh, support cast at this point, I guess. Oh, yeah. All right, Ray. What do what would you uh, rate this uh, ho- this first arc uh, on a scale of what one to ten? One to ten. Um, look again. I I enjoyed it. It, it. it depends on how you go into it. Yeah. Um, if you expect, I don't know. If you expect um, <clears throat> fantastic like classic writing, you're not going to get it. But if you expect, if you're expecting a good time, then you you would get something. I'd say maybe a seven out of ten. I think, um, yeah, I'd say seven out of ten. It's not, it's not outstanding, but it's not terrible. Yeah. Um, and it's we've had a lot more confusing and a lot more, uh, shall I say, like dumber stories than this in the past. Um, so this was quite solid as uh, as uh, the introduction to these new Scarlet Spider titles go. I think it was a pretty good intro. Yeah. Um. Trying to think what I would give this. Uh, maybe there's not a nostalgia here. Um, mm. I don't know. What did you say you gave it? I a seven. I was. I think it made six and a half to seven. Uh, okay. Maybe, but, yeah. I mean, I probably have to give it a seven. I'm just. I mean, mm. there there's good stuff in here, and then there's stuff. It's like, oh, what's going on? But yeah, I I think yeah, yeah. got to be a seven. Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we do get pretty much nonstop Ben Riley, and understandably, that's his it's his titles. Oh yeah. But it's just really great to see him take center stage um yeah i did like that they tried to mix some new characters in with like some of the, like the classic villains and stuff you know mm. more classic villains yeah and, and it's good as, as well that it's it's kind of gotten away from that um whole kane and jackal you know yeah. we're past that now you know th- there was enough of that back in the day and so it's good that he's kind of we've got the doc ock now we've got caroline yeah. so yeah 
All right. So, all right, kids. Again, uh, this will be the last episode on Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks for Ultimate Spider Cast. So, uh, make sure if you're a fan of this show or uh, The Devil You Know, The Daredevil Podcast, uh, starting in October, catch those on the Capes and Lunatics Podcast. And, uh, all right, we're going to start October. Uh, yeah. Ultimate Spider Cast over on Capes and Lunatics. What are you going to get? Doc October. <laughs> Doc October, Doc October. That's right. Awesome. So next week, uh, you'll hear Lilith and I covering Amazing Spider-Man number three, the first appearance of Doc Ock. Mm-hmm. And then in two weeks, you'll hear Amazing Spider-Man 131 when Doc Ock tries to marry Aunt May. <laughs> and then one that may catch Ray's interest in three weeks, Amazing Spider-Man 426 through 428. How did Do- how did Otto Octavius come back to life after getting killed by Kane in the Clone Saga? You'll find yeah. that. Oh, actually, I'd really have, um, you know, Doctor Doom's always been up there, one of my top-notch villains, but I really like Doc Ock as well. I mean, surprise, Charlie's not going to jump in oh, on this. Oh, you know what? Anyone? I was going to say, yeah. I'm going to surprise you. I think he's going to jump on for at least yeah. one. So, hey, kids, stay tuned. Which one? We'll find out. Yeah, he's, he's a fun villain. He's great. Oh, yeah, um, Charlie so loves Doc Ock. Plenty yeah. of time for him. Oh, yeah. Um. All right, and in one month, kids, yes, that's right. We'll be back, yeah. Uh, the Scarlet Pimps will be back for Web of Scarlet Spider number two, Amazing Scarlet Spider number two, Green Goblin number three. <gasps> what? Scarlet <laughs> Spider two and Spectacular Scarlet Spider number two. That's right. Cool. It crosses over with the Green Goblin issue. Wow. Phil, Phil Yurik. Yeah. Oh, Bobby. I'm sure Russell will be happy with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, not says not Hobgoblin, but it's 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 a goblin. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, trust me, once we get to some Ben Rowley as Spider-Man, oh, we're going to get a Hobgoblin again. So, <laughs> I think in the Green Goblin issues, I think the Rhino's in it, maybe? Is that the one with the Rhino, Ooh, I, I think? Love- yeah. Yeah, Rhino's good. I love the classic villains. They're great. I mean, it's fun to see Aura and Override. They have their, let them have an issue or so, but bring, bring the classics back. <laughs> exactly. All right, kids. So, yes, yeah, so again... Uh, for all your Marvel needs and starting in October, go to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. For everything DC, come to the Capes and Lunatics sidekicks, where you'll hear uh, Nightwing News, Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast, Comic Capers, where Lilith and I will be focusing on DC, and, of course, Ray's favorite show, We Are the Night, <gasps> the Batman podcast. <laughs> I love Batman. I know. Oh, dear me. <laughs> He's like, oh, dear God. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, but if you want to send your thoughts on any of the upcoming stuff, email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can follow Ultimate Spider Cast on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, go join our Facebook fan group, Web of Spider-Man. Now over 2,000 yeah. followers. Nice. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. So, yes, find links to all those, links to all the social medias for all of our shows, uh, links to this YouTube channel if you want to know what the mysterious Ray looks like. Yes, go to the YouTube channel. You don't want to, no, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't had his hair cut yet. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, links to the YouTube. Please subscribe to that. And again, Patreon. Again, much, much more important now because we are paying uh, for our own things mm-hmm. now, so... Yes, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, Lilith Hellfire and I are going to uh, finish out the year with boob windows and long boxes. You're going to have your Chichester chats there. And then, like, yes. I, like I just told Ray, in 2022, we're going to be doing the uh, superhero movie bracket. So, yes, lots of good stuff coming to Patreon. Or if you just want to uh, make a quick one-time deposit, uh, pick up some merchandise, get some cups, yeah. uh, phone cases, we have t-shirts, I believe even stickers, so they have underwear? Underwear? No, but I think they have uh, hoodies, uh, Ray's favorite. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and Ben Rowley's. Uh, you know, so, yeah, yeah so find links, find links to everything at uh, Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. And as Lilith is always reminding me to say, yes, it's in the show notes, whether this is the YouTube video or the podcast, it's in the show notes. So mm-hmm. please check everything out. All right. Hey, Ray. You do some pod- so, you do some podcasts, right? Oh, what are those? Indubitably, I uh, yeah. So I uh, just do a few podcasts uh, into the night. The Moon Knight podcast, the uh, the Moon Knight podcast. Uh, to know her is to fear her. The Spider Woman podcast and Last Sons of Krypton, 
a Superman podcast. We can't cl- uh, lay claim to being the only one. There are a few out there. Uh, best way to contact me is on Twitter at Ray Ray Pod, R E Y R E Y Pod, and that has links to all the other shows as well. If you if you want to check them out, uh, but yeah, always happy for a chat, and uh, yeah, looking forward to many many more episodes to do. Just we've been recording some bonus episodes. I, I did one with Phil. Uh, we're going to be releasing that um, maybe late October, early early November. Um, but they're all incentives for our Patreon. Uh, and so the, we have Patreon accounts for all of those uh, p- podcasts as well. So whether you like Superman, Moon Knight, or Spider-Woman, please give that a go. Oh, I didn't look yet. Is the uh, is the next uh, episode of the uh, serial up yet? Uh, it's dropped for the Patreons. Yep. Oh. So it, it's going to be dropping in about um, less than 12 hours now for, for regular release. But, oh. uh, yeah. Uh, shot that out um, last night. So, yeah, looking forward to uh, – Phil will be on that. So we do an audio serial adventure. Phil is uh, one of the characters there, ongoing characters. And same with Lilith. A few of the other familiar voices on Capes and Lunatics are a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, go check it out on our latest episode, 234 of Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. It's a lot of meat. Oh, that certainly is. I thought they were Boston <laughs> Pizza owners. <laughs> Lil has been, That's all. Lil has been requesting that one lately. I don't know why. I thought that was Boston <laughs> Pizza owners. Oh, I don't know. The first one to start it all off, I guess. Oh yeah, that was our big uh, conversation on uh, the Quantum Zone. Yeah, that was weird that there's not a Boston Pizza uh, in Boston. Yes, that is crazy. It's a bit silly. <laughs> I think we figured out there was one closer to Will, who's like in the southern part of the country, uh, rather than mm. Mad Kona in Boston in the north. So. The big question is: Is there a is there a general zoo? Oh, chickens in Boston? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, they're. I think they're very plentiful. Gobble gobble. Oh. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, stay tuned in November for hob gobble gobble month. Hob gobble gobble. I love it. Gobble gobble. Oh, no, I think this year no, it's green gobble gobble. Yes. Gobble gobble. <laughs> oh, Harry Osborne, I believe. Gobble gobble. <laughs> All right. Let Ray get out of here. Thank you, kids. Thank you, everyone. Again, if you want the upcoming episodes of Ultimate Spider Cast with World Hellfire and the Scarlet Pimps at the end of the month, go make sure you subscribe to Kids and Lunatics podcast. Again, you should just be subscribed to both. Kids and Lunatics and Kids and Lunatics sidekick. You get it all. But until next time, swing on back. The whip. Hi, I'm one of the High Priests of Conchu Ray, and I have the sacred privilege of providing you, the loony listener, with a podcast honoring Marvel's very own Moon Knight. So join me and a host of others at Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or support the show by becoming a Patreon member. Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. It's time to get your Conchu on.